calling everyone to our morning worship and prayer. This is a, such an amazing time that we could come and worship God together and in, in a song and even getting into God's Word. We've been looking at uh, expressing of our faith through worship and, and seeing this applied in our daily living through our, uh, the way we relate with others in our community and, and in a social uh, gathering and, and experience. I'd like to ask us to come and worship together this morning with this song. May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe you in All the works that you have done consume my heart Who in all the earth compares to who you are who in all the earth compares to who you are? A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift into your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift up once again. All creation lift its voice, declare into the end. Oh, Lord. How great you are How great you are May your praises live in every word we speak And with every gift of breath we breathe you in All the works that you have done consume my heart. Oh, who in all the earth compares to who you are? Who in all the earth compares to who you are? A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift to your name. A thousand God, we lift it once again, and all creation lift its voice to claim to the end. Oh Lord, how great you are! You
What an amazing time together. I'd like to read this passage of Scripture from Matthew chapter 25, starting in verse 31. Let me just read up to verse 40, though we're going to be covering up to verse uh, 48, the last verse. But let me just read this to us today. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne before Him and will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people from one another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those in his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you when the foundation of the, uh, from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. And I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to the one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. This is the word of the Lord for us today. We're looking at a passage here that is an expression of for us, as a, as a movement, as we're celebrating a 40th uh, uh, anniversary, it's just proper for us to review our mission values. And one of that, one of those things that we highlight uh, in this uh, celebration is we try to present to each and every one of us um, uh, who we are, and that is our desire, uh, our missions and, and, and values, our desires to honor God, and establish Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. Part of that, uh, one of the elements see, in C, uh, that you can see there is the being socially responsible. And I think it's just proper that faith should not be just be isolated and be caged within the four walls of our uh, meeting, uh, meeting places. It has to be seen and expressed outside the four walls of our churches. And that's very crucial. Now, sometimes we do that, and we do that out of our experience of the gospel. There's no legalistic rules and instructions being given to each one of us but it is just the inner workings of the gospel in our hearts. Living the gospel in the world out there is just part of becoming a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you are watching this, you as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, you may be just doing the thing that God has asked you to do without knowing that each and every act that we do has an eternal implications. That's basically, basically what we're seeing in this passage of the Scripture. This is a reflection of the, uh, of, the, of the Messiah sitting on the throne as it has been expressed way back during the time of Daniel. Now, Matthew is giving a picture at this juncture before entering into that most sacred week. We call it Passion Week. Before Jesus entered into that city and had dinner, last supper with his disciples, there was this teaching. And this teaching has something to do with the picture of his second coming. And out of this picture, he gave parables of being ready as people of God, speaking about readiness. And when he had given those parables about being ready, the ten virgins and all, now he is looking at the other aspect of that judgment, which has something to do with the way we treat others. May we look at that right now and see, now this is not supposed to be used and, and, and um, juxtaposed with the theology of Apostle Paul. This, there is a reason why Matthew wrote this. 
His main aim is to put Christ at the top, being the original greatest of them all, the original, the ultimate goat, <laughs> the greatest of them all. And being seated on the throne, he will be given that authority to be judging the living and the dead. He is the judge. And so therefore, he are uh, a, a, a classic uh, parable that I'd like us to see. And from here, we can learn some finale lessons that we as believers today and people watching this and listening to this message, whoever you are, may be encouraged today to even more acknowledge Christ in your life and the things that you do. Now, here are, here are three uh, finale lessons that people today needed to take to heart. Number one, your treatment of other people is the way you would treat Jesus. Yeah, that's a lesson there. The way your, your treatment of others, of other people, is the way we would treat Jesus. In other words, uh, treating all persons we encounter as if they were Jesus. <laughs> Now, that, that's tough. Now, look at this passage at the later part. When I read that passage, verse 40 says, And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, you did to me. It's like Christ is taking it personally. Whatever we do and the way we treat others, the least of these, you're doing it to me. It's like, wow, that's how personal Christ is and the way we would treat others. He takes it personally. And so it behooves us then as believers today to treat others the way we would treat Jesus. And, and, and that is very important. Now, I'd like you to notice that this is supposed to be I could imagine him talking to, the, to those people on his right, the sheep, because he acknowledged in verse 40, as you did to it to one of the least of these, my brothers. He's talking to the brothers. Now, you can study more uh, uh, the, book of, the book of Romans as far as the, the theological, theological perspective on justification. Because there's a possibility that someone can pick this up and use it as a, as a means to say that you can forget original sin. It, 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 it doesn't matter whether you have original sin or not. That's not the point. The point is the way you lead others or the way you, uh, you uh, either you do right or wrong, that's more important. And there's no such a thing as original sin. Now, that's, that's, a, that's a cultic perspective. That's a... Uh, Pelagian, Pelagianism, they call it Pelagianism, invented by Pelagius. He's a, he's a heretic during the early years of the church. And that's not the point. It's, it's, you, know, it's, you can't gain salvation through uh, doing good works. You have to understand that these people that the Lord had recognized uh, are people who, whom he called my brothers, and he, he, and he recognized their effort. Uh, the only thing, though, is that they were caught up, uh, 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 off guard. They didn't realize that they were doing it. They were treating right the other people around them. They didn't realize that the gospel had been an inner transformation be, just simply because the gospel had they have been recipient of the gospel. And because of that, the impact is that it changed the way they relate with others. And Jesus recognized that in this parable and commended them. I, I, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm encouraged reading this. You know, a, a passage in, Psalm, in Matthew 10 even. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. We see here, uh, you know, what, our, our, what we do is a reflection of whether or not you have that relationship with Jesus. Look at this other passage here uh, when Jesus was uh, 
still speaking to the people and his mother and his brother stood outside asking to speak to him. And Jesus says, he replied to them, who is my mother and who is my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples <laughs> and says, here are my mother and my brothers. Jesus is recognizing that as disciples and recipients of the gospel, we have become his children. We had established that relationship with him because of the gospel. And that's why he called them my brothers. And we recognize that they have helped the poor and fed the hungry and visited those in prison and those who were sick, clothed those who were naked, and so on and so forth. There were seven of them repeated multiple times, uh, to the, twice to the righteous and twice to the, those who were on the left. So what, what a lesson. The second lesson, besides the first one, which is your treatment of other people is the way you would treat Jesus. The second one is your love for God is evidenced by your love for other people. Your love for God is evidenced by your love for other people. It's like in Tagalog, we say, Asa ang resibo mo? You say whatever you want to say, but at the end of the day, pakita mo resibo mo. Show me, not show me the money. <laughs> show me the evidence. You say that, what's the evidence in your life? Look at this passage. Now, he's, now Jesus was talking to those who were on the left. This is what he says. After he has told them, you did not feed me, you did not visit me, you did not you know, clothe me, and Hey, when, when was the last time we saw you this and that naked and, and hungry and all this? Jesus says, then he will answer them saying, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, he didn't even call them whatever. Jesus called the first one, my brothers. This one, it's no label. It's already assumed. They were on the left. So they, they can't call him my brothers. He just said, Truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of these, least of these, uh, uh, least of these, you did not do it to me. So what I'm saying is that the real evidence of our belief is found in the way we act. And, and Christ's sheep, I want you to know that Christ's sheep know that they are his sheep. And so, and so they do not, and, 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 and the sheep, uh, they do not always realize that their service means the Christ. And well, the same way with those who are on, 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 on the left. Uh, they didn't realize that their neglect, their sin of omission, is actually the evidence of even their spiritual condition. The lack of it is the evidence of their spiritual condition, which means they're not necessarily like these guys on the right who are sheep. They are goats, not the greatest of all time. They are, they are the representative of those who are lost. And so, the lessons then is, once again, your treatment of other people is the way you would treat Jesus. And your love for God is evidenced by your love for other people. And the last one is your compassion and mercy towards others in Christ's name will be rewarded in eternity. It will be rewarded. Look at this passage, verse 25, 46. And these, you will go into eternal punishment, those who are on the left. But the righteous on the right, into eternal life. Not only that compassion and mercy towards others in Christ's name will be rewarded, but I want you to know the lack of these, compassion and mercy, will be punished. I recognize that compassion and mercy are expected, are attributes that are expected of every human being. 
It is expected of all of us to show compassion and mercy. There was a, there was a person who saw what Mother Teresa was doing in India. And the person who visited her was so overwhelmed with thousands of kids in the community. And it seems like he is he's, he's, he's baffled and looked at Mother Teresa and says, is what you're doing really making an impact? Uh, there are thousands of these hungry children in your community. And how is this going to affect? And, and Mother Teresa said, if you cannot feed 100 people, then feed just one. It matters to this one kid. And so the challenge for all of us is, sometimes it will give an excuse, I don't have this, I don't have that. Instead of thinking what, yeah, I don't have this, of things that you don't have, what about think of how can you do con to contribute? Compassion and mercy. I, I, I could vividly remember the last scene in the movie Cinder's, Cinder's List. I don't know if you remember that, but when the Allied forces already come and overcame the Nazis, Sindel, Sindler being a German was, uh, was uh, now his life is in jeopardy. And so the 1,100 Jews that he had saved tried to protect him by giving him a letter that's signed but by every one of them. A letter that says, uh, it has something to do with what he had done. Saving one person is almost like saving the world entire. And, and when he was walking, he was giving his last instruction in the, in the railway station to, the, to those who were there. And apparently, they had a gift for him, a ring, and a golden ring. And that gold ring was actually taken from some of the Jews who had golden tooth. Some of them, when they go through, you know, dentists, they would change it to gold and some of them, they're, 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 that's how they were able to hide some of the gold. But some of them, they allowed their tooth to be taken out in order for it to be melted and form a, 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 a ring. And they gave him as a gift, and, and then he dawned on him that he could have saved more. And, and he says, hey, you've already saved a, a lot of us. No, but look at this car, he says. Goose, Goose, Goose could have bought this for Ten more people. Ten more people. Why, why did I keep this car? Ten more people. And then he held his pin and he says, this pin right here. This, is, this will cost two more people. Two more people. At least one people named Stern, he says. He even named that one person. His name is Stern. But I did it. I did it. And they basically hugged together and, 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 and realized that I could have done more. I hope at the end of the day, not at the end of the movie, but the end of, at the end of our lives, we won't be like Sindler's, who says, I could have done more. Because the Lord has a plan for you and I. On this earth, at a certain period of time, will you do your part? And when your part has something to do for the betterment of mankind through the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. As I, as I end, I say this. The enduring impact of our earthly deeds of justice and mercy will, will be acknowledged eternally in heaven. Just remember that as we continue to live out what God has given us tasks to do on this earth with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's worship Him right now. You are holy, strong. And mighty everlasting God, you are holy, strong, and mighty ever faithful God. You
A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift unto your name. A thousand hallelujahs, God, we lift them once again. All creation lift its voice, declare it in the air. Oh, Lord, how great you are. Oh, Lord, how great you are. Oh, Lord, how great you are. What an amazing opportunity to come together and listen to this and be inspired once again. We're going to have another uh, topic for the next week to, go, to come. But at this time, what a way to end this week. Realizing that God truly honors your act of mercy, your act of justice, a simple act of, of generosity. We realize there's an e eternal implications to those. Oh, what an amazing opportunity to be living this time on this earth. Continue to be uh, aware of the people around you. Continue to fulfill the mission God has for you. And with that, it can be done because of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for making us as a movement be aware and be socially responsible. Seeing injustices, may these be turned into Lord God, something as Lord that we can pray for, intercede, and even do something about it by either some of us would run for office and, and we graduate, we become assets to society, we become businessmen and, and bankers and, and, and any career that God you have chosen us to do. And, and, and because of that, Lord, we get to be a blessing to our society. We get to, Lord, uh, make an impact in our society, make a dent in this world that knowing that that tent would lord just a simple act of mercy to another person we realize would have an eternal implication lord thank you for touching our hearts today may your name be continually be famous in and through our lives the lord bless you and keep you the lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you may the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace